Peace for Ukraine or Ukraine now. Russia, just go home. Be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, heaven Godspeed. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Warning, you might find the content here and disturbing, but the truth must be revealed. Here, what a paradox. They worship on the one hand, and on the other hand, they defile and they treat this incredibly intelligent and sentient animal with such disrespect. Gods and shackles, what elephants can teach us about empathy, resilience, and freedom by Xangita Iyer, vegan, part one of two. Continue watching to find out more. We are not surprised that you are making war. Such a brutal head type like yours couldn't care less who dies and how. When your Belizean friends ask you the how you did do, they are wondering how are you doing in the local Creole language. Beloved viewers, I'm Matteo. The sincere Belizean people pray that cheerful sunshine and benevolent deeds fill your days with contentment and smiles in heaven's blessings. Welcome to part one of a two-part series entitled Gods and Shackles, what elephants can teach us about empathy, resilience and freedom by Sangeeta Ayer, vegan. Sangeeta Ayer, vegan, is a National Geographic explorer, multiple award-winning nature and wildlife filmmaker, and broadcast journalist and a biologist. Ms. Aya produced the 26-part short documentary series Asian Elephants 101, funded by the National Geographic Society Storytelling Grant. She's also the director and producer of the globally acclaimed investigative documentary Gods in Shackles, revealing the exploitation of elephant people for cultural festivities. In 2022, she released the book Gods in Shackles. What Elephants Can Teach Us About Empathy, Resilience and Freedom About Her Personal Experiences with the Caring Elephant People. Today it is our privilege to invite Sangeeta Ayer to share her story with us. I love the use of the words elephant people because they are, you know, very much like us on so many levels. Just recently, there was a study that was released which talks about how elephants grieve. When their own relatives and family die, they stand there and they pause and they touch and they feel the elephant that has died and they grieve. And it's making me cry now. But they are so sensitive and they are such sentient beings. Asian elephants... Females, they don't have tusks. Only the males have tusks. These bull elephants are used in cultural festivals and in temples because they have tusks. And when they have the tusks, they look majestic and they look stunningly gorgeous. But this added beauty or this added majesty that the bull elephants bring is precisely the reason they're exploited. Miss Aya tells how she first made contact with elephant people. My grandparents used to take me to this amazing temple in this southern Indian state called Kerala. And there was this bull elephant and they would just leave me with that bull elephant and go into the temple. I just wanted to play with this elephant. And so that was at three years of age, my love for elephants were kindled. I asked my grandmother, why are these elephants chained and why am I not chained? So my grandma said, I'm going to go and get you anklets. You know how you put the bracelet on your legs. But I was not satisfied as a child. I said, no, their shackles are tied together, but mine is not. 
So my grandma was like speechless. Little did I know at the time that my destiny had been carved when I was a three-year-old child. Vegan, because we don't want filthy blood in our mouths. Magnanimous viewers, let's take a moment to pray that all beings be protected in God's mercy. We'll be right back here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Gods in Shackles, What Elephants Can Teach Us About Empathy, Resilience and Freedom by Sankita Aya, Vegan, Part 1 of 2. Ms. Aya recounts how she first learned about the hardships faced by India's ceremonial elephant people and how this led to her award-winning documentary, Gods in Shackles. So in 2014, I was in India. I called a conservationist friend of mine and I said, you know, I'd love to go and visit elephants in a wildlife sanctuary. We were on our way to the sanctuary when he got a distress call from a wildlife warden. An elephant has fallen into a trench. For the first time, I saw a tusker, that is a bull elephant, fallen into a trench. He had slipped because it was monsoon rains. And they had built a trench to prevent wildlife from coming into the villages. The poor elephant, his back was down in this narrow trench, his four legs up like this. I was blown away because thousands of people had gathered around him. And they all wanted to rescue him. I was very, very touched by that. And I told my friend, he said, you need to come and see what happens in the temples. And immediately my whole body was like, I got chills. My whole flashback of my three-year-old, you know, childhood came back. I went to the temples with a camera and I was absolutely devastated to see what I witnessed. Tears flowing down their face, massive tumors on their hips chains cutting into flesh and blood and pus oozing out of their ankles and some of them were even blind elephants and the mahouts or the handlers they were so ruthless they carried this bull hook that is like a metal weapon with like a hook like real heavy hook pointed hook that they will put on the ear and they'll pull the ear to make sure that the elephant is obedient. I saw all this and I feverishly recorded about 25 hours of footage. I was devastated. I visited so many temples and everywhere I went, nothing but misery. They were being paraded beneath the hot, scorching sun on tar roads that were melting. And no water, no food, no shelter. These poor, pathetic slaves were being paraded with chains dangling everywhere. Ironically, they were made to carry uh, idols of gods. And I'm thinking to myself, in India, they worship Lord Ganesh, who is a Hindu god with an elephant face. And elephants are considered the embodiment of Lord Ganesh. Here, what a paradox. They worship on the one hand, and on the other hand, they defile and they treat this incredibly intelligent and sentient animal with such disrespect, beating them, abuse, torture, neglect, depriving them of their absolute basic necessities, not even protecting them from the sun, like absolutely no compassion for such a beautiful animal. I knew I had to do something. I just didn't know what I could do. But then again, the universe showed me what to do. I launched a crowdsourcing campaign. I raised about $140,000. I went ahead and I produced this film called Gods in Shackles. The universe is so wonderful. When you follow the path that the universe puts in front of you, the universe just paves the way. All of the things, they just fell into perfect place. So that's the way we ended up producing this film. And this film then was nominated at the United Nations General Assembly 
and it won approximately 13 International Film Festival Awards. And, you know, it's just been a great journey. During the production of the Gods and Shackles film, Ms. Ayer realized that there was a significant lack of awareness regarding the plight of captive elephant people. Thus, she used the documentary as an educational tool to empower the people of India, particularly students who hold the key to the future. She then chronicled her journey into the production of the film in her book, Gods and Shackles, What Elephants Can Teach Us About Empathy, Resilience and Freedom. The spiritual, divine journey that I went through during the production of this film, that's what I've chronicled in this book called Gods and Shackles. I see. And I see. so it is not just about the production of the film, but it's about what elephants really taught me. Shackled elephants just showed me that my own mind was shackled that I had suffered from serious childhood traumas. I saw the elephant shackled and beaten up for no reason. The elephant spirit was completely broken, despite being such a magnificent, strong, dexterous animal. This elephant had become very timid, just lost all of its confidence and strength and power and just be became enslaved to these humans who, in comparison, are so puny and tiny. But they had instilled so much fear in the mind of this elephant that the elephant believed that it was worthless. Just like how I had begun to believe that I was worthless and I was hopeless. Because that's what was instilled in me as a child. And that's what the elephant showed me. Those are just some of the lessons that I have included in the book, but there are so many. Every elephant taught me a different lesson. In 2017, Sangeeta Ayer received the Nari Shakti Puraskar Award, the highest honor for women making a difference in India. She received the honor from the country's president in recognition of her courage to expose the plight of captive elephant people behind the veil of culture and religion. With gratitude for Sangeeta Aya's noble endeavors, we pray that the suffering of our precious animal people co-inhabitants may soon end as humanity turns to compassionate vegan lifestyles. For more information on gods and shackles, please visit elephantmatrix.com forward slash books. People who forsake pureness, indulge in the meat diet, thus violate the law of heaven. They are like hungry ghosts eating dead bodies, but their hungry stomachs only feel fire burning and can never be fed or satisfied. They are like flies and worms fighting for rotten and stinky food and foolishly love the bloody smell of meat. The Tao Zhang, Taoist Canon. Kind-hearted viewers, Thank you for your presence today. Join us again on Saturday, March 25th for part 2 of Gods and Shackles, What Elephants Can Teach Us About Empathy, Resilience and Freedom by Zangita Aya, Vegan. Coming up next is Boost Your Health with Ginger, right after noteworthy news here on Supreme Master Television. May all beings on Earth soon coexist harmoniously. Russia. Leave Ukraine or Ukraine now. Peace be with you too. Be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, hell not reach. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash ul. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique ul. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada ul. Sade program pesh kar dehan anek parshava. Kirpa dekho suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule ate suprememastertv.com forward slash ul.